In this video, we will show you how to uh, configure Awingu for multi-factor uh, authentication. So until now, uh, when you logged into Awingu, you had to provide your username and your password, but we can extend that with uh, a multi-factor authentication uh, solution. Uh, Awingu has uh, some built-in solutions, so this is what I'm going to, uh, to show you how it uh, works. But it is also possible to connect it to uh, SMS passcode, dual security, or any um, radius-capable um, third-party product. Uh, that, that's also, uh, of course, uh, possible. For this demonstration, uh, I'm going to use one of the, the built-in uh, multi-factor authentication schemes of uh, Awingu. Those can be configured under user connector. So if you go to configure user connector, and you scroll a little bit uh, lower in the, in the list, you will see that there is a chapter which is called multi-factor uh, authentication. And by default, it's already configured. So by default, uh, we're going to use the Awingu one-time password, uh, time-based. So um, if you click on edit, you will see that there are uh, a few options. Um, there is the Awingu one-time password time-based. There is the Awingu one-time password counter-based. So those are two solutions that come with Awingu. They, they don't require any additional cost. The only thing you would need for them is a, is a smartphone or another um, device that is capable of generating those uh, one-time password codes. So um, if you have like Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator or a plugin in your browser that is capable of scanning like a QR code and then generating those, uh, those tokens, um, that's, uh, that's all that you uh, need. In my case, I'm going to use the, the default uh, time-based uh, tokens. Uh, time-based tokens are compatible with, with any of the most common uh, authenticator apps like Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, OT. Any, any of those uh, applications are compatible with uh, those time-based tokens. The, the counter-based tokens uh, will also work, um, but be careful, for example, Microsoft Authenticator doesn't support them. So um, maybe best to, to go for the, the time-based uh, tokens where uh, possible. Um, there is one option to configure, that's the issuer name. So that's the, the, the name that will be displayed in front of your um, uh, in front of your MFA code. So if you have like a, uh, an authenticator app with already many applications in, uh, it could be interesting, for example, to specify that this is the, uh, the remote uh, apps from, uh, uh, this is, for example, a remote uh, comp uh, to, to specify that this is for uh, this uh, environment. There are a few extra options we, we can specify. So, for example, we can specify a, a list of white, whitelist subnets. So I could, for example, say that whenever I'm in the, in the office, I don't need to use uh, multi-factor authentication. Uh, so in that case, for example, I could specify that whenever I'm in the, uh, in the office range, I don't need uh, to, to specify any, uh, any MFA. It's also possible to make exceptions. So you could say, for example, MFA is required for everyone except for people in that security group or in that um, user uh, specific. So this again works with the, with the user labels. And then there is a last feature which could be interesting. That's a, a trusted browser. And in my case, I'm going to uh, enable that. And it allows me to, to do only user authentication via MFA once every 30 days for a known web browser. So this could be like a, a good balance between security and uh, user experience. It's something as an admin you can decide to enable. If you enable it, every user will have the opportunity to, uh, to trust his browser for 30 days so that he doesn't have to do it every time, but only um, if he is using a new device or a new web browser or if the, the 30 days has been expired. The last thing we still need to do is specify where we would like to do the uh, multi-factor authentication for. So the, the most simple one would be just to say that whenever somebody logs in, uh, MFA is required. So this is the first time we're using those uh, context labels. Uh, so I'm just going to add the context that whenever somebody logs in, the, in, in that context, he needs to be uh, MFA uh, required. So clicking on, on apply. So the next time I log in, so if I log out and I uh, log back in, uh, you will see that uh, there will be a QR code on the screen. So there it is. And I'm now taking my uh, application. So in my case, I'm going to use Google Authenticator scanning the code, which has been done. So now I have an entry on my uh, smartphone, which has remote comp and then my account, Steven. Uh, my current code is 547260. Uh, I have this uh, trust device for 30 days, so I'm, I'm not going to click on that uh, right now. And as you can see, I'm, uh, I'm logged in, so I have access to my uh, application. If I log out again, of course, and I log in uh, 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 for, uh, again, 
you will see that this time there is no um, ask for uh, ask for credentials. Uh, there is sorry, there is no uh, QR code that needs to be uh, synchronized anymore. Uh, the only thing it, it it asks me for is the is the code. So going to enter my new code. Um, and then I'm, for example, now going to click on trust this device for 30 days. So whenever I would do this now again, so if I would uh, log out and, and, and log in again, you will see that I don't have to specify the code. If I would do that uh, in private mode or with another web browser, then of course my, uh, my multi-factor notification would uh, pop up again.